everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. The last video we talked about linear functions and how to find the domain and range of linear functions. In this video, we're gonna extend that a little bit. We're gonna find the range of linear functions that have a restricted domain. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Suppose we have some linear function and this linear function is restricted to a certain domain, right? So what does this mean? Well, normally linear functions have a domain of all real numbers. But in this case, we can't, we have a restricted domain. We can't just go plugging in whatever we want for x. We have to be careful. We have to make sure it meets these guidelines. In this case, it has to fall within this interval. x, whatever we plug in, has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So I can plug in negative 2 and any number bigger than that as well, and those will all work for x. But if I go plugging in negative 3, negative 5, none of those numbers are included in our restricted domain, right? So, how do I find the range of this function now that the domain has been restricted? Because remember, the domain would normally be all real numbers, and the range would normally be all real numbers as well. But now the domain is restricted, so if you guess, you probably guess that the range is restricted as well, and you'd be correct. The range is going to be restricted, but how do we find out what interval it's restricted to? Because that's what we're trying to get to. So, there's a few ways you could do it. You could just graph this. If you graphed this from x equals negative 2 all the way up to negative infinity and you, you know, visually saw where the y values were going and wrote that as an interval, and th that would work fine. But it's not necessary. And when these examples get a little more complicated, it gets more tedious, there's actually a simpler, easier way to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and share that with you right now. So what we're going to do is we're, first we need to find out is this function increasing or decreasing. So Luckily, we're given this beautiful function in y equals mx plus b form, which is slope-intercept form. So in this case, my 3 is my slope, and negative 1 is my y-intercept, but I only really care about the slope, right? Let's think about what slope means. m equals, what is that? Change in y over change in x, right? This is my slope. And in this case, my slope is 3. I'm going to write it as 3 over 1. So what this means is when my x increases by 1, my y increases by 3. So as x increases, y increases. And we don't even really care by how much it increases. We just want to know if it's increasing or decreasing. So this function is an increasing function. And if we want to write a general rule, if m is greater than 0, increasing. So what do you think is going to happen with if m is less than 0? Well, let's think about it. That would mean m is negative. So as x increases, y decreases, right? So that means we have a decreasing function. What about if m is 0? I'm missing one case. If m is 0, what do we have? Let's think about it. If the slope is 0, my x would be gone. 0 times x, that's gone, right? And I have y equals some constant, which is a horizontal line, okay? And we found the range of a horizontal line in my last video. So the domain restriction, since the range of a horizontal line is just one number, right? The domain restriction affects it very little. Okay, so horizontal line. So why do we care about whether it's increasing or decreasing? Well, let's think about it. What does an increasing function look like? It's trending upward, right? And again, we don't really care by how much it's increasing, we're just trying to see this pattern. What about a decreasing function? It's trending downward, right? Meaning as x increases, y decreases for a decreasing function. For increasing, as x increases, y increases. So I didn't draw my x and y axis, right? Because I don't need to. And this is the, the shortcut. This is how it works, right? So let's, let's look at this pattern. Look at what's happening to my domain restriction. Look at what's happening here. Negative 2 is the lower bound for the domain. Right? I can't get any lower than that. Negative 2 is the uh, least value I can plug in for x, but I can plug in anything greater. So basically, since my domain has a lower bound, I'm going to be cutting my domain off, my x is off, somewhere down here. Wherever x equals negative 2, and it's going to become a point. Right. So think about it. If my function is increasing, negative 2 is also the lower bound for the range, because my range are the y values. So this means that from negative 2, whatever that value is, that whatever that y value is, where x equals negative 2, that's the lower bound for the range, and the upper bound is, well, infinity. Okay? What about if it's a decreasing function? Well, the same idea applies. I'm cutting it off here, where x equals negative 2, 
and my x is going all the way to infinity, so I'm good all the way out here. And what's ha happening to my range? In this case, my wherever x equals negative 2, that y value is the upper bound, right? This time it's the upper bound for the range. So this is all we really care about, increasing or decreasing. And in this case, since it's increasing, our range is going to be what? Range. Our range is going to be some interval starting at whatever happens when I plug in negative 2 and ending at infinity. So I'll go ahead and write, uh, let's see. I know that we're going to include that point because we have a solid dot. It's f of negative 2, basically. Or in this case, we just plug in negative 2 to x. And I'm ending at infinity. So what is this value? Well, I can simply plug in negative 2. I probably could have done that earlier, but... Okay, 3 times negative 2, that's negative 6. Minus 1, that's negative 7. Negative 7. So uh, in this case, our range starts at negative 7. This is our y value, negative 7. It goes all the way up to infinity. So again, you could have graphed this, and maybe it makes more sense to you to graph this when you're first learning it. But this is a shortcut, and it works for more complicated examples where you can just... Think about, okay, is it increasing or decreasing? Okay, what is happening to my domain? And, you know, you may have a domain restriction where it's the domain is bounded above. And you may have a, a domain restriction where the domain is bounded below and above, right? And you just have to make those adjustments depending on how the domain is restricted. Make those adjustments on your little line here. But hopefully this helps some of you uh, find the, the range of linear functions that have a restricted domain. If you want to see more examples, let me know in the comments. But hopefully this helps. If you have questions, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. We'll make some more brain gains.